We are talking Zags here this morning on Upper Left Sports. Mm -hmm. And if you got a chance to tune in to the NBA draft, I don't know about you, but uh, I think the NBA draft might be the best draft in all of sports. And it's because they give it all to us in one night. Uh, love to see the reactions from the families. And what happened is I watched the first round. And every year as a Zags fan, when, when's our guys going to go? You know, mm -hmm. We got a chance to see Rui go early. We got a chance to see Brandon Clark go early uh, recently. But the one guy this year after uh, Petrusev pulled out uh, that we thought his name would get called is Killian Tilly. And the, the second round started, and I uh, was trying to stay up as late as I could to see his name long called this year super long yeah and uh, i'll tell you what I, I didn't make it all 60 picks i was about 10 picks short before i, right. I passed out but i woke up in the morning thinking he had his name had to get called it wasn't however it looked like he uh, he might have landed in a good spot down in memphis yeah i mean let's Anybody wants to be drafted. Let's not sugarcoat that. I mean, I think he should have been drafted, but clearly his injury history played into it for these teams. Uh, I think that's really the only way you can justify a team passing on Killian Tilly is just purely based on just history, worried about him staying healthy. But in the end of things, I think he signs with the best possible team for him. It's more important to get uh, put in the right situation and then get drafted i think he'd rather have that of course and i mean especially when you're not a top 10 guy if you're a top 10 guy you know the, the right situation is is kind of out the window you're top 10 you're expected to come in and you know turn things around um, but when you're not one of those guys fit is everything so, so why, why is memphis a good fit for tilly for tilly man i tell you what they're a young team so they're gonna get some run but let's not forget who's already down there memphis of course brandon clark was one of the best players really almost in the league last year as far as a rotational guy. Uh, and, I mean, it's just an amazing setup. And now Tilly gets to go back and play with his former Gonzaga teammate. Both of these guys were with Gonzaga in 2018 season. And we never really got to see what that duo could really look like at full potential. Of course, Tilly did battle some injuries that season. Now they get a chance to really put things together. And on top of that, let's talk a little bit about Memphis's roster. Jaron Jackson Jr., who is their, of course, second star player behind Ja Morant, is going to be out for at least the first month or so of this upcoming season. So they're going to have some openings in that front court. And they also don't have a lot of shooters out of their big men. Brandon Clark has turned himself into a very serviceable NBA shooter. Um, but we Not also know... He's not Tilly, and we also know Clark's game is very well suited around the rim, yep. too. The shooting for him is an icing, icing on the cake. For Tilly, that is the cake. This is a guy who shot 47, almost 48% from three his first two seasons at Gonzaga. 44% career. 44 on the career. So this is something that is not new to him. This is his game. And I think we've seen those stretch power forwards become a lot more valuable in the NBA over the last couple of years. Yeah, BC, uh, Brandon Clark down in Memphis last year, averaged 12 points a game, mm -hmm. six rebounds, one block per game. Uh, you know, with the NBA and with the draft, I feel like you're always drafting for upside. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to draft a guy that's going to be a solid, you know, 10-minute, 10, 15-minute 10 a game guy that can get you, you know, maybe two rebounds and five points. We're all trying to find the unicorn, right? Yep. And to me, that's Killian Tilly. I mean, we know he's got the, the injury issues, but if he can stay healthy, this is a guy who can be a an all-star in the NBA. I mean, when he's healthy at his best, we saw him completely take over the WCC tournament. Yeah, Having a guy uh, at that length who can shoot 45% from three is something every NBA team would like to have. And I think we forget how great of a defensive force he is down low. I mean, we always hear how he comes from the volleyball background. But if you can put Tilly and Clark down in the, the low block on defense, have fun trying to get shots up. Yeah, no, I mean, that, that's going to be tough for anybody. Uh, that's not a duo who's necessarily going to push you out of the post, but they don't need to do that. Both of those guys are incredibly bouncy that's something that has been consistently overlooked for Tilly. Of course, everyone is well aware of Brandon Clark's bounce at this point. Uh, but Tilly's often forgot that he's very athletic when it comes to that. So, you know, those guys' ability to come from the weak side and send your shot to the third row is a very, very strong ability for them. So, 
very undervalued, I think, as far as his defense goes and his athleticism. And like you said, man, he really is a unicorn if he stays healthy in the skill set that he brings to the court. If he stays healthy, which we all hope he does. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I can tell you up here on Upper Left Sports and, and being Zags fans, um, having watched enough of him, I will guarantee you that if this young man can stay healthy, we will look back on this draft as the biggest snub, uh, the biggest swing and miss of a lot of these teams was not taking a chance on Killian Tilly. 100% agree. Biggest steal of the draft, even being not drafted, that's how good of a steal he is. You heard it here first.